Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the cryptoverse. Today we're going to talk about Bitcoin. We're going to be looking at on chain data and comparing it to price. So if you guys like the content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you join the community. Check out the Telegram channel here, which you can find a link to in the description below. If you want to talk about these charts, maybe I'll drop a couple of them there for you guys to, you know, to download if you want. And then also check out the premium list at intothecryptoverse.com if you want access to extra content. Uh, so this chart here, it shows the hash rate versus time. So it's a very, you know, it's easy to understand chart. We, we see this as a logarithmic scale. So each tick mark, we're going up 10x. And this is terahashes um, per second. So keep that in mind. And you can see that, you know, early on, it was, it was very easy to increase the hash rate. And of course, this is, is dependent on, you know, uh, just technology, not just the amount of people um, uh, mining Bitcoin. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind as well. But, um, you know, early on, we went from around 10 to the minus five to 10 to the one in, you know, just over a year. And then from here to go from 10 to the one, so just say 10 terahashes per second, um, to go to say 10 to the five. So here to here took a little over two years or so. And then since then, so since 2014, um, a little, you know, maybe say midway between 2014, to go from 10 to the five to 10 to the seven took around two years. So. It's getting harder to move up the curve. We're really starting to level off, okay? Now, it's interesting because if you, if you plot the halvings on here, you can see that the hash rate, it does kind of dip down after the halving. So this is the first halving. You can see that it was going up into the halving, and then right after the halving, it started to go back down. Again, here, if you squint your eyes, you know, you can see that we're going up, a slight dip, but not really much of anything. And then finally here, you know, we, we were moving up, and then into the having a dip and then straight back on on course so nothing really changed in terms of the hash rate um and you know in the in the macro on the macro scale um now if you plot the hash rate on the primary y-axis and the price of bitcoin on the secondary y-axis you can kind of see you know how they how they relate to one another the the hash rate here peaks just after the price of bitcoin peaks Again, here, it, it kind of hits, you know, this plateau after the peak. And then again, here, it hits this plateau after the peak. And now we're kind of just, um, we're kind of in that phase where we're probably just going to be steadily increasing uh, for the next several years before plateauing again. So if you plot these against each other, if you plot the price of Bitcoin against the hash rate with a color-coded time dimensions to color-coded time dimension, so this is, you know, 2010, 2012, 2019. You can see, you know, how how these relate to one another. So price of Bitcoin is going up on the y-axis and the hash rate is going up. And both, note, are on a logarithmic scale. Um, so you can see, we you know, we increase and then we retrace a bit, kind of gather our, our gather ourselves before going off again, retraced, retrace back down, gather ourselves, go back up, retrace back down, gather, you know, gather again, go back up, and now we're in another stage before we hopefully, you know, see a move back up into the $100,000 Bitcoin regime and, and would further likely see the hash rate go up from, you know, where it currently is at around 10 to the 8 or just over 10 to the 8 terahashes per second up to maybe 10 to the 9 or 10 to the 10 terahashes per second. If you continue on, so we have not shown this chart on the channel before, this is the hash rate divided by the price versus time. So it's interesting because you can see there's kind of like a little concave down pattern, another one, and then you know we're we're in another one. And I think this one is going to, you know, if you don't if you just look at the larger picture, it's gonna look something like this where it just extends way out um and then and then comes back down to, to look, you know, so that we continue this pattern. Um and I, I think this is, is gonna take place over the next say four three to four years or so. Um, and if you think about it, so just uh, going back to math class, you know, what's causing it to go down? You can see that this, this metric is going down where the price is peaking. So this is at the end of 2013. This is the end of 2017. Um, this is, you know, that, that run we had in 2019. So what's causing this? Well, if the hash rate, you know, you can imagine that if, if the price is going up rapidly, 
then you're dividing the hash rate by a larger number, okay? So if you're, if you're rapidly dividing the hash rate by a larger number and the hash rate isn't increasing commensurate with the price, then the value has to go down because you're dividing by a larger number. This is what happens. So you can see that um, once this really starts to, you know, to starts to go down like this and you see these sharp fall offs. So like this one here, this one here, maybe even this one here, if you want to count that as say like a mini, a mini bubble. Um, these could be informative in trying to, to figure out, okay, well, you know, we see that the hash rate divided by the price is dropping off. It's dropped off by, you know, maybe 50% in, in a certain period of time. You know, maybe it's time to consider um, uh, taking profits because so far when you see something like this happen, I mean, here, this, this value, this metric went from, you know, two, so, so 10 to the zero is one. So it went from two to 0.3. So it dropped by more than 50%. I went from two to 0.3 in, you know, in, in a few months or so. Um, so this, looking at the hash rate divided by the price, may be useful in determining when the next speculative bubble is because you, you know, it's, it's basically saying, okay, the price is increasing artificially. We're clearly in a speculative bubble. Um, this has to stop at some point and we need to see it, you know, correct again. If you, if you plot it the other, well, first let's drop the, put the halvings on here. So this is our first halving. You can see that after the first halving, this metric rapidly dropped off. After the second halving, it took a while. You know, we moved sideways for a long time before rapidly dropping off. Again, this halving, I think it's going to be similar to this one, but we're going to continue to move sideways a lot longer before rapidly dropping off. Um, if you if you plot on here, say, let's go, okay, so this is the hash rate divided by the price. This is the price divided by the hash rate. So you're just showing it in a different way. Um, you, you know, you can see the first, kind of our first concave up pattern, kind of like a little scoop. And then our second one, which is much larger. And then a third one, which is going to likely, you know, be larger than this one but it's going to, you know, it's probably going to be, you know, flatter. It's not going to be as steep because we know that volatility at the macro scale is decreasing. So we might expect something like, you know, just really long and drawn out um, as, and again, you can imagine this, the reason why this goes up is because the price in this region is increasing at a, at a rate much faster than the hash rate. So you're taking a, a larger and larger number and dividing it by say like the same number or it's basically the same because the price is going up so much quicker than the hash rate. Um, so you might even consider to think about it like, okay, well, when you're in this scooping phase, when it starts to go up at the end, you know, it's the party's almost over in a sense. Okay, so party's almost over. Again, here starts to go up, party's almost over. Um, so this is, is going to be a, thing, a key thing, I think, to look out for. And even in this case right here, when it started to go up in the short term, it could have given some indication. I mean, hindsight 2020. Um, but it certainly will we'll follow this metric in the future to see if it, you know, how, how useful it can be. Um, if we continue on, uh, let's show, okay, so we have the hash rate divided by the price, the price divided by the hash rate. So this is the number of active addresses divided by the price. So the number of active addresses is just, the, you know, it's defined as the number of addresses active within the last 24 hours. And we're dividing that by the price to see if it tells us anything useful. Um, and I think it does because, you know, you can see at the halving, we were basically going sideways. And then straight after the halving, the number of active addresses divided by the price rapidly decreased. Okay. Why did it rapidly decrease? Because the price was going up so much quicker than the number of active addresses. Again, this helps show that there's an artificial speculative bubble forming. It's not say like a, a fundamental thing. It's more so, you know, people are just FOMOing into the market and it's not sustainable. And then you have these, you know, these bear markets um, where it, you know, it starts to go back up and then on another accumulation phase, okay? After the halving, we see it, we see it drop off. And this one took us to 2018. We you know, we had a, uh, you know, our, our accumulation, you know, we were, we're basically, I think, just in our accumulation years. So these are the accumulation years um, similar to this, okay? 
Uh, but at some point, I imagine, you know, we've, we, okay, we had the dip, we came back up, moved sideways. Had the dip, came back up, moved sideways. Dip, came back up, and now we're basically just gonna move sideways for a while. So that doesn't mean that the price can't go up, but I just think it's going to be more of, say, like a fundamental thing, like the price is going up, because there's you know more and more people are using Bitcoin. We're not in that speculative bubble phase right now, um, which is why I would say, okay, we're probably just gonna move sideways for a while. Here, we're just plotting the opposite. This is the price divided by the number of active addresses. So this might be a little bit more intuitive for, for some people. Uh, you can see you know it goes up, it comes down sideways. And then after the halving, we see it go up and then back down. And then our accumulation up, back down, and then our accumulation. So uh, same same kind of concept, just drawing the, the metric a little bit differently. And then here, I thought this was interesting, uh, just to show, this is the price of Bitcoin versus the average transaction fee. And if you bear with me, um, we're plotting it in, you know, color coded in time. So again, this is going from 2009 all the way up to, um, you know, 2020. So if you if you watch what it's doing, you can see, you know, this, this metric when you're pl plotting the price versus the average transaction fee, you know, you're moving up and then you're, you know, you're, you're hitting that peak. It's strongly retracing. You can see these lines up. So the average transit, the average transaction fee increases, you know, um, as, as Bitcoin's going into a new bubble and then it, it retraces back. And then we see a new line form that's basically just monotonically going up, back down, and then a new line forming. But you can see the slope the slope of these lines is decreasing, so just watch this. So this line here, the slope here is steeper than the slope here, which is steeper than you know some of the slopes that are forming here. But again, this this is too early to tell um, what's really going to transpire as we break sideways, because we really, if our target is say 100k Bitcoin, we only need to go up to this point. Um, so you can imagine say like a, a slope like this that really extends out for a number of years and finally gets us there um uh, or sorry i'm looking at the price so we want to get yeah we want to get up here um where the price is and the question is how much is it going to cost us um so you know when when the price of bitcoin was say a hundred dollars the average transaction fee was around say 10 cents uh say thousand dollars if you go sideways we can see the transaction fee um, was you know was getting a bit higher you can see a couple bucks in the last cycle when Bitcoin was around twenty thousand dollars over here you can see the transaction fee was like the average was maybe like 20 30 40 bucks so during the peak of a speculative bubble things can get really crazy um, and out of control so don't be surprised as crazy as it sounds I mean don't be surprised if um, the average transaction fee, you know, continues to go up. And I get there's, you know, there's different solutions being being implemented, but still at the same time, uh, don't don't think that we we can't see, um, you know, high transaction fees again when there's a speculative bubble and the network just gets clogged. If it, if it can't handle the volume of transactions going through, then the transaction fees are, are likely to um, uh, quickly go up if it if it can't handle the load. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If you, if you guys like it and you want to see more of it, remember we do have a premium list that will give you a weekly newsletter, a weekly premium video, and a Google Sheets dashboard with risk metrics and a lot of other things like regression analysis and all sorts of stuff. So I'd love to have you join. Um, and remember, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Check out the Telegram channel. Uh, say hi on the channels. Get, leave a comment down below and like the video if you want to support the channel. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.